Successful Minds with Patricia Barnowski Schneider, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet. Hear their stories and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Successful Minds with Patricia Barnowski Schneider is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Patricia Barnowski Schneider. Hello and welcome back to Successful Minds. I'm your host, Patty Baranowski Schneider. Today I'm joined by Adriana Popescu, PhD. Dr. Adriana Popescu is a clinical psychologist, addiction and trauma specialist, author, speaker, and empowerment coach who's based in San Francisco, California, and practices worldwide. So thank you for joining us, Adriana, and tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Thanks so much for having me here today. I'm really happy to be with you all. Um, I am a clinical psychologist. I have been working in the field of mental health for over 25 years. Um, grew up in a home where my dad was a doctor, so I was already oriented <laughs> kind of toward the healing professions. Right. And um, went to college, majored in psychology, was pre-med, figured I would be a psychiatrist. Um, and only to find that, that mm, I wanted to talk to people about their problems. I didn't want to dissect <laughs> cadavers or, um, work in ERs right. or deal with some of the things that I realized med school was going to be. So, uh, my trajectory changed in college, you know, to just going toward thinking about a PhD in psychology and right. then. I decided to take um, a year off before college and grad school. And in that time, I went to Colorado and then became really sick. So nobody knew. The doctors didn't know what was wrong with me. And it was a very long journey of healing to only 13 years later to find out I had Lyme disease and chronic fatigue syndrome and a whole host of other things that come with that. Mm -hmm. And um, Western medicine had nothing for me. Mm -hmm. So I started exploring alternative therapies, acupuncture, it started with chiropractic and then acupuncture. And then I discovered energy medicine and energy psychology. And these were the things that started helping me to heal from my Lyme disease. And what I realized that it wasn't just about a tick had bitten me and I had this bacteria in growing in my body, but there was uh, unresolved trauma from my childhood. And there were um, beliefs that I held about myself and others. So it, so I started realizing that to heal from any condition, you really have to take a holistic approach. You have mm -hmm. to address, yes, the physical, but also the mental, emotional, and the spiritual. Because my healing journey was a, really a spiritual one where I had to work through some deeper stuff and mm -hmm. find some meaning and purpose that had been missing and find my authentic self, which I had not really known who that was. Mm -hmm. So all of that really has informed my practice as well as the books that I've worked on um, and educating people, you know, at the stage of my career where I, where I really want people to have this information mm -hmm. and to have tools that go beyond traditional talk therapy, which mm -hmm. I often liken to a dog chasing its tail, <laughs> right? Because we're never really getting down to the real roots, especially the energetic root causes of what is creating our distress, our disease, whatever right. it may be. You know, it's, it's actually ironic because um, I did a podcast not that long ago uh, with the hypnotist who I had worked with years ago. And you are right, because I had suffered from insomnia for so many years, and all the doctors would give me pills, pills, pills. Didn't ask me why, I had no clue. And it turns out in three sessions, she had me cured. And it just turned out that I had, I was a single mom of two, you know, raised them, you know, and apparently I had some deep rooted guilt on my own part. And as even though I consciously wasn't thinking about it, that's what was keeping me up at night. So you yeah. are right, 100%, that there's a lot more deep-rooted stuff that people need to get to the bottom of to fix many, many um, ailments. Yes. Um, the subconscious mind, you know, all the things we're not aware of, all our programming, our belief systems, our right. unresolved emotions and traumas, and the body, how much of that stuff also gets locked, especially trauma, mm -hmm. really gets locked into our bodies. And so we can't talk our way out of it. And when we're do doing talk therapy with this you know, prefrontal cortex part of the right. brain, that's not where the trauma is. That's not where your fight, flight, freeze response is. Right. That's not what's causing 80% of your behaviors are not within your conscious control anyways. 
Yeah, so. You know, it's actually funny because I was in an accident at one point. I won't get into details of your show, but it was a skydiving accident. So when I fell in free fall, my helmet blew. So think of that 175 mile an hour wind in my ear. I was unconscious. Don't remember any of this. But it's weird when I'm, I don't, because I don't remember any of it, I have no issues or so I thought. And I'm driving in the car and the window was open and just that constant. And I'm like, all of a sudden my heart sunk and I got like all freaked out. And I'm like, we need to close the window. I'm like, obviously there's some deep rooted stuff in there that is in my head that I don't know about, but it's in there. <laughs> yeah. your, your body knows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Now what inspired you to write, write this book? And by the way, the book is called, what if you're not as effed up as you think you are? So what inspired yes. you to write that? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, people were always asking me, when are you going to write your book? When are you going to write your book? And um, you know, for those of us that have written a dissertation to get a PhD and right. been through the ordeal of that, some of us are like, Ugh, I don't ever want to write that. Right. So I was that person. I was resistant to it. And I also felt for a long time, like I had nothing to say. And then I think it was really in this pandemic time when everybody was kind of reevaluating their lives and right. a lot of stuff was hitting the fan. Um, I think that's when it finally pinged for me, like, okay, now is the time for me to just really talk about my work. Right. And the title, which I know is controversial, really oh, comes good. from, <laughs> it's, it comes from, the, from what I realized in working with people all these years is that, you know, people think at the core, whenever I'm working with someone, it seems like the common denominator is people think there's something wrong with them. Right. They're having what I would call core false beliefs because they're not actually true. They're, but they're things you've learned throughout life, especially early in your life as a kid. Mm -hmm. Things like um, I'm stupid or I'm not enough or I'm mm -hmm. unlovable or whatever it is. And those beliefs are, if you believe that to be true, mm -hmm. that's the energy you're putting out in the world. And things like the law of attraction will say, well, then if that's what you're going to attract back, even right. traditional psychology has this thing called confirmation bias, meaning like you're only going to look for the evidence that proves what you believe to be true. Right. So if you believe you're unlovable, you're always going to pick the unavailable person. Your relationships will not work out for you. And then you get to say, see, I really am effed up. Right. I, I am unlovable. Everyone always leaves me. Right. So it's this constant cycle people get stuck in and they're not conscious of it most of right. the time and in my work with folks I find that you know that's usually at the root of whatever issue there are also core false beliefs that come have come from your experiences including trauma trauma mm -hmm. might be something like I'm powerless mm -hmm. uh, I'm a victim I can't control what happens to me mm -hmm. and so you get into this very disempowered place and my purpose in writing the book was to empower people to consider the possibility that maybe they think they're effed up, but they're not in right. actuality. That you're actually whole and perfect just as you are, just as you were born into this world being. Mm -hmm. Like a little bundle of joy, like babies are, right? right. They don't know judgment. <laughs> they don't think something's wrong with them. Right. They learn that. So right. this is about unlearning that. Right. And it's true. You see that all the time. And, you know, we were just talking about that, how a lot of people, you know, maybe they're raised in a family where, you know, it, it, like the generations change. So the older generation, kids are seen and not heard, do as you're told, you know, you can't have a voice, just shut up, go in your room, you know, and they grow up, you know, for decades, not knowing any different. So they sadly believe that because they don't know any better. And yeah, it's definitely uh, interesting. Yeah. And intergenerational trauma too, you know, it gets yeah. passed down um, all the, and, and, and people don't realize this. I talk about this in the book too. Like think about, when you're uh, a fetus living mm -hmm. inside your mom for nine months, right. you're swimming in all of her stuff, all of right. her unresolved traumas, all of her core false beliefs, all of her stress, all mm -hmm. of that is imprinting on you at a very young age. And I think we don't often realize what an impact that has had. Right. Um, but the good news is with the, with the tools and techniques that I offer, this is to me, this is a book and a workbook combined because at the end of each chapter, I give people exercises and tools from all different perspectives, traditional mm -hmm. psychology, energy, energy psychology, um, this work I do called access consciousness, I give you different ways to look at this issue of your core false beliefs, mm -hmm. and how you can change them with different tools. Nice. Now, what was the most important lesson that you learned while writing and compiling the book? 
Uh, honestly, what a pain in the ass it is to write. <laughs> um, I learned a lot about the publishing industry because it's really different now than what I thought it was like growing up. I mean, that's <laughs> that's honestly like what I've learned. Um, but mostly I think it's in the reception. I've been really moved by people's reactions. Like I've, I've struck a nerve here, you know, like people mm -hmm. are relating. I wasn't sure, you know, I kind of like, is this going to be over people's heads? Is it going to be too abstract? And I, and I've, what I'm finding as people are reading and commenting is they're getting it and mm -hmm. it's moving something within them. It's pinging something like you're speaking something that's true that I've known is true, but mm -hmm. maybe didn't know how to get to that truth that maybe I really am okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe there really isn't anything wrong with me. Right. And that's been a huge realization is like, wow, this, this, this is working. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, what do you hope people gain from the book? Is, is just that, uh, just the, the, uh, an idea, even a, even a seed, if we can just mm -hmm. plant a seed of maybe what I've been thinking all this time, or maybe what my family taught me or society has taught me, maybe everything I'm seeing on social media mm -hmm. is actually some BS yeah. And I don't have to look like everyone else or act like everyone else. Like I want people to feel okay being their own unique, weird, freaky self, whatever mm -hmm. that is. Yeah. And that there's nothing wrong with that. And if other people have, have a judgment about that, that you can say, that's nice. That's an interesting point of view that you have that point of view, but I'm not going to let it get to me. Right. No, it's funny because like even that song that said, I know Victoria's Secret, you know, I love that song because I'm like, you know, it was things like that growing up in my my era, um, you know, that caused people to be anorexic, bulimic. You know, you have this role model that you're supposed to be super skinny. You're supposed to be perfect. You're supposed to be straight A, you know, and yeah. you don't know any better because that's what's out there. And now right. it's it's nice where, you know, like, like I was tall. I was thin. And I was told, like, I was doing modeling back in the day, and I was told that I should go to the big women's um, big women's modeling. And I'm like, I, I, I mean, I was 5'9", and I think I weighed 135 pounds, and they said that I was too big. Like, wow. wow. So, yeah, it's it's a lot of generations of a different form of thinking to get people yes. to accept that none of that is true. So I love that song because I, I think it, like, speaks good to um, the younger generation now. It's like, you do not have to be like that. They're not even real. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Now you you use holistic and alternative therapies in your practice. So tell us a little bit about that and how it benefits the clients. Well, I yes, and it's 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 a lot to to cover, but basically, um, I, I try to explain it this way, right? Any condition we're dealing with, like I said before, uh, depression, anxiety, addiction, a physical thing like Lyme disease, you have to look at the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual components. But if you really look at what all those are, the common denominator really is energy. Your thoughts are a form of energy. Your emotions are a frequency of energy. Physical sensations are energy. Your body is made of energy. Mm -hmm. And the good news about that is that energy is malleable. So we can, it never stays fixed and permanent. You know, even the sofa I'm on, it looks solid and real, but at some point, even it energetically mm -hmm. will change and degenerate, right? So if we learn how tools of which many have now developed in this whole field called energy psychology, rooted in 5,000 years of traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, meridians, mm -hmm. or Indian medicine with chakras, mm -hmm. um, we have the, the technology and science now, interestingly enough, I mean, people used to think, ooh, this is weird woo-woo stuff. Yeah, <laughs> But, you know, Harvard Medical School did a 10-year study of acupuncture and basically validated it. Mm -hmm. They were able to measure these spots on our body that are more electrically charged. Mm -hmm. And they're able to see how when we stimulate those points, whether it's with needles or in something like EFT, emotional freedom techniques, or tapping, mm -hmm. which is a modality that's becoming ever more popular from energy psychology, if we're thinking about a stressor and stimulating that acupuncture point, it's sending an electrical signal up to our amygdala, which is the emotional center of our brain that's responsible for that whole fight, flight, freeze response. Mm -hmm. We're essentially telling the brain, hey, we can calm down. We're not being chased by a tiger. We're mm -hmm. safe. And that, if you can extinguish that fear response, think of what that's going to do for all the people that have anxiety and panic and right. the people who are self-medicating that anxiety work and addictions, the people that are self-medicating all that stress and anxiety with drugs and alcohol and other kinds of addictive 
device addiction, you know, mm-hmm. all, the, all the things. If you can give people tools that let them change the way they're feeling and thinking, then you're empowering them to create a whole different life for themselves if they mm-hmm. want. Yeah, yeah, they don't have to suffer. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting that you said how they're doing studies on that because that makes sense now because I was wondering why all of a sudden the insurances are covering acupuncture when they didn't before, but I guess that makes sense now. I mean, they, they're they definitely behind the times and I think a lot of it comes back down to the pharmaceutical companies because if they can oh, yeah. cure it this way, they're not making money and well, that's a whole not, other episode. <laughs> no, but Patricia, they're not curing anything. What they're yeah. doing is medicating symptoms. Yeah. And what these techniques do is they get down to the root What is the root cause of this issue? Um, There's trauma, for example, that's locked in the body. It needs to be accessed and released. We have somatic therapies that are EMDR and brain spotting and somatic experiencing. We have so many modalities now that do have a growing body of literature research, you know, that's showing we can see changes in people before and after. We can look at their MRIs have made a huge difference because now they can look at people's brains. If I if if I may give an example of a oh, really sure. cool research study, Dr. Peta Stapleton, who's based in Australia, and she's done a TED talk on her research. Um, she worked with people with food addictions and how they it was a brilliant study. They had people look at their foods, photographs of their foods mm-hmm. of comfort, their cookies, cakes, whatever, and put them in an MRI. MRI machine while they were looking at those photos to see what their brain was doing. They then had them do this EFT tapping on acupuncture points two hours a week for four weeks for those food cravings and everything, stuck them back in the machine, looked at their brain, showed them those pictures, looked at their brains, and their brains were quiet. That addict, the amygdala, the nucleus accumbens, those parts of the brain that are involved Mm -hmm. with addiction were not activated. And those mm-hmm. people were like, yeah, chocolate. A year later, you know, they follow up with them. Hey, you were eating six chocolate bars a day. How's that going? Oh, I haven't had one of those in a year now. Oh. Wow. So when mm-hmm. you can start showing people like the pictures of a brain before and after doing right. a treatment and you see that it and, and and that the change is lasting, you look three months, six months, a year or two years later and it's still mm-hmm. maintained. Now you're creating change. Now wow. you can really see, wow, like this stuff works. No, that's good. Now, what advice do you have for someone who's struggling with an addiction or trauma? Um, Get help because more than likely you're not going to be able to do it on your own. Mm But you you just, you know, even me early on when I was learning some of these, you know, energy psychology tools, I was using them on everything. I was trying to heal myself of all my deepest, darkest traumas and things, and I got overwhelmed and flooded. So Mm -hmm. work with a trained professional, Mm -hmm. at least to start. So that you can learn some tools that then you can use. I don't like my clients to become dependent on me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I don't like to give them the fish, as they say. I like to teach them how to fish. (laughs) So learn some tools. Yes, you can learn from books. Like this isn't meant to be something that you're going to heal your trauma and addiction from. It's just a jumping off point. It's like, here's a bunch of tools. Try some of them. If they help you, great. But work with a trained professional who can Mm -hmm. see your blind spots, who can see the things that you don't see that you're not even consciously aware of Mm -hmm. because you've buried it so deep or it's locked in your body and you don't know how to get to it. Um, Work with people like that. And an an addiction is such a complex issue Mm -hmm. that it really requires not just a therapist, but, you know, support and changing the way your self-care. And I mean, there's so many aspects to it that it's a Mm -hmm. lot to try to do on your own. So, um, and when you try to do it on your own, it reinforces the idea that I'm broken and defective and I'll, I'm all alone and nobody understands this. Mm-hmm. So when you actually open yourself up to other people who might be struggling with the same things, you're going to feel more supported and you're going to actually make more progress with your healing when you involve others. Right. Now, how has your own journey of healing from Lyme disease and chronic fatigue syndrome impacted the way that you work with your clients? I mean, I'm my own guinea pig, right? All the, <laughs> all the tools and techniques that I use with my clients that I write about in the book are things that I found helpful in my own journey of healing. And I did, I was able to heal myself from some, a supposedly incurable disease and I am healthy and I'm happy. And, um, and when things come up as they do, cause life does show up, um, <laughs> I don't live in fear anymore because I know I have these tools that I can use and I have support and I have people who are experts who can guide me through whatever 
stuckness I might be getting into. Right. And there may be deeper layers still. I'm always finding, oh, I thought I was over that. But, you know, maybe there's still some deeper things in there that I didn't quite get to before. I wasn't ready to get to before. And now that's fine. I just keep working through it. You know, I'm, I'm a work in progress, too. Yeah. So what do you think sets you apart from other therapists? Uh, I'm well, I think you get from from just talking with me. I'm pretty real. I'm pretty <laughs> the title of my book. I mean, you know, I kind of say it like it is. I still have that East Coaster in me that's very <laughs> like direct. Um, and and being real with people, you know, just being I have compassion, but I'm also not the the mommying warm and fuzzy type mm -hmm. because I find that a lot of times that's yes, compassion is important. But like oftentimes what my clients want is kind of a kick in the ass and to know yeah. like, like more like a coach, you know, like a coach is like, I know you can do it. Come yeah. on, right. let's get let's get you over whatever this is that's in your way and let's help right. you get to where you want to go. I feel like that's what I really am is 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 a catalyst, a coach, you know, um, like I'm your biggest champion. I know what you're capable of. I often see in my clients what they don't see in themselves, the strengths. And the abilities and things right. and if i can help you find that within yourself then that's my job is done yes. it is true because people like i was telling somebody else like years ago i had went to a therapist and all they did was listen to everything i said and, like, mm -hmm. and when i left there i was like well that was kind of pointless it's like talking to myself in a mirror i was like yeah. what did they like they thought they were helping me by listening yeah. and i'm like that's not helping me at all <laughs> i have so many clients who will say you know I walked out of, I would just talk about all my problems and walk out of the room feeling worse than I did when I went in <laughs> with these tools and what I'm trying to do. No, you're going to be walking out of the room feeling <laughs> different, hopefully yeah. feeling a little bit better, or at least on the way to feeling better. Right. You might not right. be able to get in one hour, you might not be able to tie it up in a nice bow, but most people are going to experience some sort of relief and at least a shift in perspective to where, okay, maybe I can overcome this. Maybe right. I really can change this. Yeah. If you can give someone hope, that is huge. Right. And I like how you say you set them on the stage to do it themselves because so many of these doctors, like I knew somebody who was going to therapist, it was like 15 years. And I was kind of like, you're still going to them. I'm like, they're just milking your insurance because if you're not fixed after 15 years, there's no hope for you at this point. But it, you know, at least you're helping them and then empowering them to do this on, them, on their own, which is a nice uh, change of pace. <laughs> Well, and it's also to like, what does the person want, right? Like I have people that are coming to me for a very specific issue. We just need to do a few sessions on it and then they're done. And I have other people that maybe I have been seeing for years, but we started with one thing, like let's right. say an addiction. They've been now clean and sober for a period. Now we're working on all these other things, right. like, you know, their relationships and, and many of them now have families and that right. brings a whole new set of yeah. stuff to work on or they're entrepreneurs and business people and they want to keep growing and being more successful so right. the the issues themselves will Are change different yeah well yeah. no, that's fine and they obviously feel comfortable with you which is you know nice now what are some of the biggest challenges that you face in writing the book time the time to actually sit down and do it honestly um because i have a pretty full schedule mm -hmm. i have my private practice I host my own podcast. I'm also clinical director at a drug and alcohol rehab. So the hardest thing, and I'm on book number two right now, which is a book on EFT for tapping for addictions. And um, it's just finding the time is hard. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I might lean a little bit towards perfectionism. So, <laughs> you know, re -re reading and rereading and editing and things like that, that can right. sometimes feel challenging. You're you're, you have to let go of the idea that if it's ever going to be perfect mm -hmm. and you have to be okay with it's good enough. And honestly, like most people say, I think this is amazing. And I think, oh, it's okay. You know, <laughs> getting over your own self-judgment and perfectionism mm -hmm. around the process. Right. Nice. Now, what are the uh, some of the key takeaways you hope readers are gain from reading the book? I mean, I think it's honestly in the title. Right, <laughs> yeah. up as you think you are, right. and if you do think you are that, or if there's anything in your life that's not working, it's because you have a point of view about it. Your mm -hmm. point of view is what creates real reality. And so, if you have a negative point of view or expectation, if you have one of these core false beliefs, or you're you're doing, you know, this this catastrophic thinking, or always assuming the worst is going to happen, mm -hmm. you're going to end up creating that. So, if there's something in your life that's not working. Go back and find what are the beliefs 
and the way I'm thinking about this, and then where is that coming from, then these tools can help you to change that. And now you can create something different because it's usually what's not working in your life now is probably something unresolved from your past right. that's still impacting you in some kind of way, whether mm -hmm. it's through the beliefs, whether it's through a highly anxious or depressed state, whether it's some kind of physical thing. We, we are pretty, it's the vast majority of people I work with, we can figure out what the root is and then we can work with these tools around releasing that root cause. So mm -hmm. it frees them up to, choose and create something different. Right. So, yeah, and sometimes I think they need um, somebody to help point out stuff, you know, right. because you don't see it yourself. You, you know, always an outsider looking in, you can notice things that we ourselves don't notice. Absolutely. And so anything else you want to talk about with, with your business, what you do and how you can, uh, you know, you work with people everywhere. So how could it get? You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, um, so I'm licensed in the state of California to provide psychotherapy here. And I have a website, adrianapopescu.org, where people can find that. But I've also, in the last year, also started a trauma healing center called Firebird Healing. Mm -hmm. And Firebird Healing has other therapists that, yes, we can work with folks in California, but with our workshops and with our healing retreats, mm -hmm. which is something new that, that we've been working with, we're able to work with people from all over. Obviously, we can, we can do coaching with people from all over. Mm -hmm. But for example, I have a workshop coming up next week called From Survival to Thrival, a four-part workshop on helping people who have experienced tra trauma move from that constant state of like, white knuckling it or always mm -hmm. like in that state of panic mm -hmm. to, to extinguishing some of those trauma responses and moving kind of like the concept of a phoenix bird right? right rising from the ashes of whatever you know devastating thing has occurred to actually thrive in your life mm -hmm. um we also have a retreat coming up in bali in september uh nice. for conscious recovery i also do this work called conscious recovery mm -hmm. similar sort of in spirit to the um, and I talk about uh, it in the book. It's like, that's where the term core false beliefs came from. My friend TJ Woodward wrote this wonderful book called Conscious Recovery. We use it at the rehab. We're going to do a week-long retreat, taking a deep dive into these principles. So really the material, um, what we're offering, the podcast, I have my own podcast, Kaleidoscope of Possibilities, Alternative Perspectives on Mental Health. So that's where we explore a lot of these different modalities and tools and stuff. So I think if people go to firebird-healing.com or uh, adrianapopescu.org, and then I'm on all the social media, you can find me at those there. You can get a sense for what I'm offering with my team and um, what we're trying to create in the world, which is just empowerment and healing. And just mm -hmm. ultimately, I want to change the world, right? I want to live in a happier, kinder, um, more caring kind of place. And I think that that in order for that to happen, it has to start from within. We have to heal what feels broken inside before we can really change what's happening out here. Right. I mean, when you see on the news, like, these people who, you know, go on these shooting sprees or, you know, it, I don't even watch the news anymore, to be honest, because it's just depressing. It's, it's nothing good. But yeah. when you you do hear about this stuff, they're all from deep-rooted issues, you know, and it's, it is it is true. The world we're living in is insane, and it does need hopefully soon a nice change of pace but just listening to all that you're doing i could understand now why you just where do you find time to write a book i'm like i'm exhausted listening to all of this <laughs> it, it is it is but i feel like i'm on a mission you know and at a, i'm at a stage in my career where it's time to start sharing all the things that i've learned mm -hmm. with the world because i've learned some amazing things and people don't know about this stuff mm -hmm. and that's why i'm doing these podcasts and trying to get stuff out there mm -hmm. um it's really about like empowerment and and healing and yes we can change and here's right. here's some ways how yeah now i love the thinking outside the box ways too because so many like doctors and therapists and whatnot it's all textbook you know they and you know i always say like in the world itself you have to change and evolve and keep up with the times and things are always changed so kind of branching out and say well what else can we do we already know what's been done for the last hundred years what else can we do what else is new and if it's worked obviously spread that you know if i'm sure you hit a lot of speed bumps along the way because the medical profession probably doesn't want to think outside the box but no no you know. but but the science is on our side you know with energy psychology for example there's over i think 300 published research studies now mm -hmm. like you can't really deny that evidence right. when it's right. right there or or the brain scans when you're looking at like yeah. the brain before and after you can't really dispute that so they're they're starting to come around 
And mm -hmm. yeah, the question that I love um, is what else is possible? That's really like the guiding force for me at this point is like, what else truly is possible? Right. Nice. Right. Well, I'm going to put your contact info on the, on the end again so that people can find the various ways to get a hold of you. So thank you again for being on the show. Again, that was Dr. Adriana Popet Popescu. I'm yes. saying it right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, Patricia. It's been a pleasure to speak with you today. Oh, likewise. So thanks again for listening to Successful Minds with Patty B. Never miss an episode by subscribing to the show here. So thank you again. Thank you for listening to Successful Minds with your host, Patricia Barnowski-Schneider. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates, and we'll see you on the next episode.